First agenda item is uh, approving the meeting minutes of February 10th, 2021. Motion. Second. Okay, any discussion? No. Roll call vote, Jonathan? Yeah. Joyce? Aye. Fred, yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants, they were in our packet of information and I signed off on them. Anybody have comments on it? Not for me. No, okay, moving on. Public comment. Uh, anybody on the, from the public here tonight that uh, wants to make a comments uh, on anything that's not listed on the agenda? No. Just no. a quick question. This, this is Chris Kellogg. Um, I'm wondering what the um, any any guidance that are, uh, that can be provided um, on unmaintained areas uh, to facilities. You know that you see a lot of facilities around, including generation facilities and uh, facilities not currently open, where there's no means of access to the facilities. Are there any concerns from you know uh, fire chief's perspective? Um, and or do we take any action on that? What, what kind of facilities are you referring to? Uh, you know, you could have, you see the castaways that's kind of just sitting there. Right. Uh, you see solar facilities with unplowed, unplowed driveways. Um, and it just seems to be more of a trend as of late. I'm just curious if uh, there's any concerns. Well, I, I know that some of the solar farms have, have been plowing their access, maybe they don't do it that same day, but I know at least the one by me and one others on Christian Lane have been doing it. Uh, I, I don't know if our fire chief has any concern of getting access to these that are that are plowed main, or maintained. John, do you have anything to say? The ones that have been accepted by the community are supposed to be maintained. We haven't set the regulations or the, as far as I know, the other two haven't been accepted yet. So we can't enforce those. Okay, understood. They're not, they're not online. We, oh, I, I thought on Christian Lane, I thought the two newer ones were. That's news to me. Okay. As far as facilities, uh, yeah, I know that's the obvious one at, on State Road. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just I thought I'd raise it. No, no, no immediate concern. Just mm -hmm. was curious as I, you know, pass by. I've seen a lot of them, multiple storms not maintained. Not Chris, if it, if it helps, Chris, the, the, the winter's over, so. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> You're right. I hope so. <laughs> okay, okay, anybody else? Any public, any public comments? Yeah, just so I, I understand, the concern is that um, if there were some how were it to be a fire at the castaways and their driveways not plowed, we would have trouble getting our fire trucks in, for example, to to take care of it, right? That's the, the nature of the concern. Yeah, and, that's um, correct. I, I would say the same for any of the facilities, right. you know, yeah. whether it be a grove facility or a, a solar uh, array uh, or, you know, a vacant building, you know, the okay. concern is response for emergency crews. Um, so, but I, you know, I know I've, I, I travel Christian Lane a lot and I see them not maintained for multiple storms. And, you know, it just, you know, particularly okay. I've seen the Christian Lane one, one of them <laughs> is never maintained, uh, including the castaways and the, um, the, the other one is the solar field midway down that I never see maintained, but it, it seems like the, the one down at the other end of Christian Lane by the blue school, that's always maintained, which it almost makes no sense to me. Just an observation. <laughs> same owner too. That's the same owner. Same owner. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Uh, agenda uh, scheduled appointment for six oh five. We're pretty much on time th this this time with uh, Stephen and Michael. We're a little closer to schedule for you. <clears throat> uh, these are Stephen and Michael Herbert of Urban Grown. We're going to uh, discuss. Uh, Proposed marijuana cultivation site in, in Waitley. Uh, I'll leave it at that and uh, let you uh, 
have the have the, the agenda now to talk about what you're proposing. Thank oh, you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Yep. So uh, we are expediting as fast as we can, uh, moving expeditiously uh, to uh, negotiate a uh, host community agreement. Um, Brian's informed me it's been the <clears throat> typical uh, policy of the board that we have the community outreach meeting uh, before we uh, engage in official mm -hmm. negotiations with that. And I want to apologize to the board that we had scheduled that without getting permission. We were kind of going on what we were used to. You know, we've been through this a couple of times, holding it in person. And uh, we'd, uh, you know, came to our attention that we need to ask permission. So we'd like to first, again, apologize and just uh, get the board's permission to do that remotely over Zoom. Okay, uh, I, I guess I don't see any problem of, of you not holding a public information meeting uh, community outreach meeting, I guess it's called, and you've you've picked a date already of what March first? March first, Monday, uh, March first, seven p.m. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and I think that has been advertised already in uh, at least one local newspaper, right? Correct. In the in the Gazette, it was run uh, Monday um, morning of this week. Correct to give seven days uh, notice, and also uh, on our website, urbangrowninc.com, we've also put a a link and a pop-up that gives the uh, the meeting link as well as what the, the ad gave that as well, but it's a little more detailed on the website, so. Okay, so you're proposing that to be a Zoom meeting? Yes, yep. And I was gonna ask Brian if potentially it would be appropriate to even put that on the town's <coughs> website. I don't know if that's uh, appropriate request or not, but it might be helpful. Um, I can certainly share that um, as well. And what time was that gonna be? Uh, 7 p.m. Okay. I can't um, see any reason why we would deny this particular request. Um, so I certainly have no objection um, that I can think of. Are there any comments? <coughs> okay. No comments? Okay. You well, first they're asking about the meeting, I guess, and we're going to hear about what your proposal is. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, so Jonathan, do you have any concern with the meeting time for Monday? No, I mean, I, I, I wish I could make it. I cannot make it. Um, but I, I mean, no, it, it, it's pro forma stuff. Yeah, yeah. okay. With, as a requirement with the CCC, we'll be recording it, uh, Jonathan. So if you'd like us to uh, send that along to you, I certainly can do that. I'd love to see it, or, or 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 maybe you can send it to Brian, and Brian can put it in our Dropbox. Even um, even better. Yep, we'll yeah. do. <clears throat> if that's so okay we'll with you, Brian, I don't want to speak for you. Okay, uh, so please continue with, with what you're proposing to do there. Okay, sure. So uh, the site that we're proposing, uh, as was reflected in the uh, agenda, is the piece of open vacant land that's directly adjacent to the truck stop, kind of just across from the diner, uh, south, going south on Route 5 and 10. Um, it's zoned commercially, which we thought was a, a, a huge plus. Um, Agnes uh, Ting is with my father on the uh, other end. She uh, would like to do self-storage units on one side of the property. And we would like to do greenhouse cultivation on the other. And ultimately we would like to even uh, put a retail store as a second phase, uh, not immediately, but um, you know, in the future. Um, that's kind of the, uh, the proposed use for the site. So it would be both facilities would be very secure. Obviously self-storage has, has their own security requirements. We have our own um, as well. And I'm sure the board's familiar with those with uh, with our other colleagues that have been through this already and us as well. Um, so um, that's kind of what we're looking at. We're looking to start at 10,000 square feet. That's what our license is for. Um, the reason we're really trying to move things along as fast as we can is we have to um, obtain a host community agreement to ch do the change of location for the provisional license. Um, so that's uh, what we'll apply for once we um, you know, successfully negotiate uh, with the town, the host community agreement. Um, 
uh, what else can I say? We have a site plan already being uh, produced by Eaton Associates, uh, Randy Iser, uh, civil engineer for both uh, for both projects. Had a good meeting with the planning board last night, an informal discussion um, that went well. Um, we're going to be operating on well water. Um, so we have uh, Charlie Pratt coming up from Southwick. He's probably the the guru, if you will, for wells, and he's confident we have plenty of water we can tap into there. Um, Cause I know the concern for the town is uh, the constraints on the municipal water. Um, and I'm sure uh, Chief Hannum can, can attest to that, that um, the strong preference would be that we don't um, put any strain on the, uh, the town water system. So we're gonna have our own well and, and use that for irrigation. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. And we're just going through the, through the process and and the steps to to move this forward. Okay, so this will be a greenhouse cultivation. That's correct. That you're talking about not open. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So will you will you have a need for septic? Yes, and that's good. That's on my list. Um, we place a call to Wayne. I know he's busy at this time of the year. Um, whether or not there's sewer there, I think there probably is. But if there's not, um, we certainly have the the room to put in a small private septic just for bathrooms. Um, so it wouldn't be a very, a very big system. And uh, we've talked to Bill Ceruto and he, he thinks that would be not a, not an issue to put there. You, um, and again, this is, this isn't our domain, obviously, but certainly the diner has septic, but if you, if you can't tap into that, I, I would be shocked if that land perked, it's very wet land. It's actually, it's, it's been perked historically. Um, and talking to Charlie, he's done wells very close to there. And he said, uh, there's, there's a good aquifer there. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Cause it's very wet. Yep. Okay. Yep. The, the other thing uh, I just caution you about is the, uh, grown marijuana. You have to be no closer than 500 feet to schools, public recreation areas and whatever. Yep. There is a, a, Public recreation area across 91, it's within 500 feet of your property. Are you aware of that? We're aware of that. Um, that's okay. something we're going to have to address. Um, I know in the bylaws, we can we can have that reduced down to 300 feet, I believe, which where we're going to be sited on the property, we can, I think, be within the 500. But if we need to, we'll definitely request to be reduced down uh, to that. Just given the fact that 91 is a buffer in itself, there's a fence, obviously people aren't gonna cross 91 and it's uh, visually, you won't be able to see it from the uh, recreation center anyway, so. Yep. Fred, I'm gonna share the assessor's map and I think I have the right parcel highlighted. Is that the, that's the right parcel, six? That's yep. correct, Brian, yep. Yes. Okay. So Fred, so the, the recreation area is, is immediately across 91. That's what Fred's referring to. Right. Tritown Beach. Right. Right. Well, and, 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 and Chris, that, you, you got the, the map up there. What's that little building down in north of that parcel? Is that a building or is that something there? Oh, the little, um, uh, when I put my arrow on that, it says um, FL Roberts. Uh, that no one that says, um, it's actually is number 11 and then number 12 on the map Brian is showing. Um, the 11, though, you can't see because it's right on top of the building. Right, so I've got the, uh, the online version on my, um, yeah. uh, and it says FL Roberts is the owner name. Um, and oh. then if I go to 12, 12 is, uh, all is Western Mass EEM LLC. Right. Okay, um, okay. That must be just a number, not a building. It, on Brian's, it looks like a structure there or something. Uh, on this one, structure as well. Uh, it might be that the truck stop and the restaurant have different, or technically different parcels. Because right? uh, like that 11 doesn't look, you know, I guess there's the, the, rest, the restaurant over there. Uh, like 12 doesn't have anything built on it, but, um, but 11 does. Yeah, I want to say that I want to say oh, that I'll 12, in there. I want to say twelve was purchased by F. L. Roberts, post the other part of the of the properties, because something used to be on twelve, and I don't remember what it was. There was a house used to be there. Yeah, years ago. Yeah, the the corporations have I believe they have the same address, so I think they're the same. Yeah, under yeah, the same yeah. Parent. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I'd be surprised if they were actually different companies. It just might appear different there. Um, My other question around the 500 versus 300 feet is, is that from what part of lot 48? Because you know, the, the, you have the pond area, and then you have the small beachy area, you have a little bit of parking, and then you have this large parcel that's currently unused. Um, are you saying that it's required from any part of that parcel or just the part that's currently used? My reading of the, uh, the zoning bylaws says any part of parcel 48 has to be, say, more than the 500 feet from I guess any part of parcel six. Okay, so it's any part. So I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, you know, I, I had my my grand vision um, when I become king is that we have a tremendous amount of recreation space or actually rec recreation activities in that southern part of that parcel. It's currently just field. All right. Uh, it's about 10 acres um, that will be hopefully used for, you know, tennis courts, basketball courts, um, and, and other things that make Waitley a more livable town. Um, so I just want people to be aware that if, if they're measuring the 500 feet from where it's currently used, that that current usage might change and it'll move south in terms of <laughs> activity. Well, I, it's a, I think that would be included right. any, anywhere in that parcel, Jonathan. <laughs> That's my reading, and I think planning and, and ZBA will we'll look at that closely. Right, and, and again, this plan is, you know, largely festering in my little head and nowhere else yeah. right now, um, but that's going to change, so. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Anything else you wish to share with us at this time? Um, I just wanted to uh, add that, you know, obviously we've had experience dealing with, uh, with a previous site and the <clears throat> interpretation of the bylaws from planning and ZBA was the measurement was from the actual operation, uh, you know, on the parcel. So it wasn't the entire parcel. So obviously, you know, for, the, for in terms of setbacks, it was from physically where the cultivation and operation was going to go. Um, if that makes sense. Okay. And so where would that be on, on that parcel six? Do you know yet? Um, it's going to be South, the Southern portion. And, uh, if we had to, we can, uh, we can move it towards state road. Um, you know, mm -hmm. obviously we have to, there's some, uh, swale of wetlands. If you look on the GIS and what's recorded with the town in the, uh, you know, Southern corner there where it triangulates mm -hmm. to state road, but, uh, we mm -hmm. can, we can definitely push it closer to the road if we need to. And, and Michael, you're aware that, I'm, I'm guess you have to be aware that not more than a half mile down the road is gonna be a pretty large retail operation. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Does, does your uh, proposal ha have any, I, I didn't look, I don't remember what it said in our bylaws, or, or the state requirements of being close to, uh, say, a re either a restaurant or a restaurant that serves liquor? There's an alcohol license. Is that a consideration at all? No, no, it's not. Uh, the ABCC doesn't have any prohibition with that, nor does the uh, CCC. Um, they don't they don't get involved with that. You know, that being said, if we wanted to try to put a bar up that uh, that sold cannabis and, and liquor. I think there might be a problem there, but that's obviously not in our plans, so. But, but there is one at the, uh, at the truck stop. Correct, yep, as long as, long as it's not on the same parcel, um, there's, there's, no, there's no language in the regulations that speaks to that. Okay. Yep. The other issue um, about the self-storage units, does that have to get, uh, a host community agreement on that, or is that just with zoning? I don't believe there's a, um, a law that 
you, that you have to jump through a lot of hoops for a self-storage site. I've, I've not ever had to do a host community agreement for a self-storage yeah, site right. or anything like that. So I, I think you're you're right about that, that that has a lot of laws that apply uh, zoning and so on, but yeah, I don't believe- a, Yeah, it has a, a slight community. land needed and zoning, yes. Yeah. Okay. So for Monday's community outreach meeting, are you gonna show a site plan? Uh, we may have, uh, it, it all depends how fast Randy can work on it. His daughter's having a baby, so he's going to be a first-time grandfather, so he might be a little tied up. But we certainly will do our best to show if he can't complete something that's, you know, obviously got the precise engineered measurements, we'll give a, a uh, the best rendition we can do to kind of show where the proposed placement of, uh, you know, the self-storage and the cultivation would be for sure. Yep. We're working on that right now. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Yes, uh, Fred, if I may, uh, for Michael. Uh, we're at 345 State Road, Michael. We're, we're about 100 feet. Do you hear me? Yes, we're, 100, you? we're 100 feet. I can see your lot from my front lawn right now, very mm -hmm. well, during the day. Oh, and okay. I was a little confused last night when Sandy and I attended the went with you to the uh, planning board meeting that you had mentioned this was commercial uh, without residential around, no residents around. And again, we're right next to you. We're immediately across the road from this lot. We are quite concerned about what issues might arise. And, but most importantly, we're not included uh, as a resident, as if what what about the residential aspect of this? Our home is here, and we uh, are concerned about what might occur, such as smell, or lights, or traffic, um, or the aesthetics to this part of town right across the street from us. Um, so it's not that we would expect for you to have any answers right now. Obviously, it's premature. You're planning it together, and we certainly respect what what you're doing. Uh, you spoke with Sandy by email today, my wife that's sitting here with me. Uh, so your communication's good and we really appreciate that. And we look forward to the to the meeting next next Monday. But again, it was it was it was confusing for me when I heard you present last night to the planning board meeting that this is commercial and there weren't any residents, quote. There weren't any residents around. Um, so I just want to remind you not to forget about the fact that there is residents. And it is residential, and that we live across the street from this lot, literally. And that we will be participating and monitoring what happens in respect that you would be able to keep us involved. Appreciate that. Of course, and, and I, I didn't mean to discount that. What, what I meant was the lot is commercial, and it is not in the middle of a residential neighborhood like some of the uh, other projects that have you know, been proposed in town. That was what I was speaking to. Obviously, I do know that there is residential, you know, somewhat close by, but, um, you know, we, we're out on the site today and certainly we, we can't see you from where we are because of the, the wooded area. That's not going to change because that's wetlands. So we, you know, will not be able to, to cut that down or clear that or operate there. Um, but certainly I was not discounting, um, you know, keeping, keeping involved. That's why we sent, sent letters out to everybody and, uh, you know, we definitely will be, will be responsive. I apologize. It took a little while to get connected by email. When we set up the website, we uh, had our email down for a while. So we weren't getting any emails until, um, you know, today, basically. So. Well, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate that, Michael. And that, again, that's all we're looking for. Certainly. Uh, we're not judging whether it's a good project or not. We just want to make sure that we're, we're a part of the loop. Got it. And we, we will definitely keep you in the loop. And, and I would add, just just for, for precedent purposes, that, that Pete and Sandy were outstanding neighbors for the truck stop when they were looking for their liquor license, that they understood the business practice, the, the business opportunity that, that the truck stop had. And, and they really worked constructively, as did the as did uh, FL Roberts. Um, to, to find common ground and to understand each other's perspectives and everything. And, and so I, 
I, I know that they'll want to, that they'll be positive communicators with you. And, and you know, I, I, I hope that you, you do the same because it really yes. was a very strong, and Pete and Sandy might disagree with me, but it was a, it was a good line of communication yeah. when that liquor license um, issue arose. I don't even know how long ago it was now. Yes, and it ended up being a good decision. Uh, it, was, it was good for the town of Whateley. And that's our focus. It isn't just our property. We're looking at it in terms of what's best for the town of Whateley. Right. I've been here over 40 years now. And uh, we really are natives. Uh, so we, we are, we're, we're going to work with you and make sure that we're going to work with the town and make sure this ends up being a, a good project. Yeah, the, two questions, the two questions you mentioned, um, odor. We have ways of containing odor and also stray light. Uh, we will have uh, light deprivation greenhouses, which will block any light inside the greenhouse from getting out. I just wonder, is parcel four zoned as commercial as well? That's R6, I believe. Pardon? R6, residential. R6 six six. is but parcel number four south of you. Is that commercial as well? No. No? Okay. On the Access GIS, GIS it's listed as R6. All right, okay. I don't know what that stands for other than residential. All right, okay. That's, that's an old zoning designation that, that applied to the, the, the zoning bylaws previous to the ones that are currently in place. Okay. But I, I believe that is still residential. Yeah, there's not much place for residential on it because it's mostly wetland. Yep. So that would be AR1, going to today's zoning. Yeah. Okay. I think um, the only thing we have to vote on here, I mean, board, we would need to just vote to let them proceed with their um, with their meeting via Zoom because that, that's just the, the wrinkle of the law. Um, so, you know, if we vote in the affirmative here, we're not saying anything to the planning board or any, we are just saying, fine, proceed to your post-community agreement, right? So with that in, in mind, um, I'd like to move that we vote to allow um, the Heberts to move ahead with their host community agreements. Second. Oh, sorry, with, sorry with, their, with their community outreach meeting. I think I said the wrong word earlier, outreach meeting. Second. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Okay, we'll call vote, Joyce. Hi. Jonathan? Yes. Fred? Yes. Okay. Thank you for participating today. Thank you. Thank you. We'll Thank you, Mr. Time. Chair and the, the board. I appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thanks night. Thanks for coming. Right. Thanks Take for care. your concern as neighbors. We want to be good neighbors. Okay. Yep. Yes. Call me anytime. You've got my number. I'm, I'm available anytime. Okay. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. We'll leave. Okay, moving, moving on to our agenda. Uh, next is uh, commun is COVID-19 state of emergency. We've got uh, two items. One is uh, existing uh, resolutions that we have, and the second is reopening of town offices. Uh, Brian? Yeah. Um it, it, just in the general big picture of, of COVID-19, obviously, vaccinations are 65 plus um, and people with uh, two or more comorbidities um, were aware of the chaos that's um, ensued since that has happened. Um, I know the Board of Health and the what's called the Frontier EDS, is the Frontier Emergency Dispensing Site, has been working hard um, really since this started to plan for this. Um, I think most people know that, that there was some, that there were some appointments available at, at Treehouse Brewing in Deerfield, um, those filled up fairly quickly. Our hope is that we'll be receiving additional vaccine and there'll be additional appointments that will open up there. Um, but at this point, there's nothing scheduled. 
Uh, part of that is because it's really an issue with, with the state, the federal government not giving the state enough time to really plan out um, and, and plan ahead of time as to uh, when people will be receiving vaccines. By people, I mean the, the state and then the state uh, sending it out to the different uh, vaccination sites. Um, so it's, it's really still a mess. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about the letter that, that the, we can discuss the letter after. Um, but in terms of local cases, I, I, we may have one, uh, that may, that might have possibly been cleared. Um, so thankfully, uh, things are trending in the right direction. Um, so what I'm, we had talked a little bit about this at the last meeting, and that was reopening the town offices, um, at least on a limited basis. It would be just the front, the front lobby again. Um, I would propose that we do it um, three mornings a week, like we did in the past. Um, it wasn't, uh, we didn't have a, a flood of people coming in, but I, but there there are some things that that people like to come in for. Um, I think we can do it safely. And so um, my recommendation would be, and there's a, a draft order in the in the meeting material that that we would reopen the, the town offices on Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, and then obviously uh, at four other times we could set up appointments like we have been doing. Um, last time we did Monday, Wednesday. There's just some some logistical issues that make it better for us to be open Monday, Tuesday. Thursday. We in the past we were Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, but it would be better if we do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, just in terms of staffing and. Um, so it would take a uh, the action from this board to, to rescind its previous order, which closed buildings to the public to reopen them to the public. And my proposal is that this would be effective March first. Okay, Brian, have you asked any? Anybody else, any employees in the building, whether this is a, uh, acceptable to them and whether they have a, a I guess, a personal concern of, about the uh, dealing with the public again? Um, I did send an email out to the to the employees that work here, uh, that work in the building. Um, I heard back from, uh, I think, mostly all of them. I can't say everybody got back to me. Um, and I, I think most people are okay with it. Well, the ones that I heard from, and the reason we're switching from Wednesday to a Tuesday is to address one of the concerns. Um, if we were if we were open on Wednesdays, there were some issues that one of the employees would need to walk through the lobby to get to the, the service window. Um, so we wanted to avoid that situation. Um, mm. But I, nobody said, nobody replied that they were that they were against it. Okay, and we're also we're still allowing employees to work remotely. So, does this mean that if we're opening these hours up, that they would have to be there them hours? Um, I mean, really, the quite honestly, the person that this probably affects the most is Lynn. Um, That's what I was thinking, yeah. And um, this is I, she's on board with this. Um, and she and she's going to be in. She plans to be in the office during these times. Um, I, um, if I understand it correctly, um, that this still means that people who can work from home and want to work from home and don't have to address people at the window at that service window will still have the option to work from home. Is that correct? Yeah, in, in my mind, it, that doesn't change. This doesn't change that. Yeah, it doesn't change that because that's really a different um, declaration, right? This is the about reopening buildings and the other one was about employees. And so um, as long as um, our the, the staff who really have to work that window are concerned, that was my main, my main concern was to hear that you've talked to those employees and that they are on board with that and that you know coming in for them that would mean for those people at least there's a commitment to uh doing your work from work 
I also understand those are employees who some of their work has to be done in the town office, even if it's closed. They have to be there because of the computer systems they're using. So okay. I, I think if the consensus among folks who work there, especially the ones working the window, is that we can start opening for three mornings a week, I think we should give it a try. It's always subject to review, um, but it seemed to work when we did that before. And um, I, I think it might, if you think it's time to open, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I guess I'll for the most part echo Joyce. Um, I have huge reservations about opening back up. Um, that being said, I, I want to be consistent that I always want to trust the people who work for the town and, and they're going to do what's, what, what's best for, for our systems. Um, I think one of the reasons that we are seeing a, a, a downtick in COVID cases is because we have been so diligent. Um, it, it's not magically going away. It goes away because people take precautions. Um, so I'm, I'm apprehensive about it. Um, I certainly want to make sure that whoever is not comfortable working from home, as long as they're getting their job done, can 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 make that that decision uh, with their supervisor that they continue to, to work from home with no with no penalty. Um, and, and I also want to make sure that the snowball isn't being built that will start going, rolling down the hill. That we start having meetings in the offices before it truly is safe. Uh, Cause it absolutely is not right now. Um, but I'm Brian, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you. And, but I, but I am apprehensive about it because I think that we are moving a little too quickly for my comfort level. I, I, I guess I, I have a little concern too, uh, but let me ask Brian, is, is this opening it up just for people to come to that front window and talk to Lynn or Janet, or is this for any, for opening up the whole building for anybody to come to say, talk to you or I guess water department or Cynthia during these hours? Um, the way that it, I mean, the way that it's written and the idea is that, is that it's just that front service window for somebody who wants to come and, and drop off uh, a tax, you know, a tax check and get a receipt. Um, I mean, quite honestly, I mean, there are, <laughs> there are still a number of people who will, who will bang on the door until somebody shows up. Um, right. And I, I'm not, I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just suggesting that's, that happens. Um, but yeah, it's just for the, it, it would just be for that front service window. Um, I mean, if we don't do it March 1st, it, it's, it's not, it's not the end of the world if we want to delay it further. Um, it's just that it's just, I, I think at some point we need to get there and I don't, I don't know when that, I, I don't know when that is. I don't think there's a right answer here. Um, so we could delay it if uh, we could delay it a little bit longer. Um, March 1st is not a, a, a magical date. It's really just giving residents the opportunity to, um, you know, to receive those services in person. Uh, well, well, this, it's affecting mostly, I guess, Janet and uh, Lynn is going to make their job be easier if people are there in person. Or sometimes it can be determined no. if they're there. I guess. <laughs> Depends who it is, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I hear you saying that they're they're agreeable to it. I I guess for the for the time being. Yeah, I, I mean, I, one person was very agreeable. I think one person is is a little bit apprehensive, and that's why we wanted to make that change from 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 Wednesday to Tuesday. Um, mm. But again, mm. March first isn't isn't a, a magical date where. Um, we mm -hmm. could we could put it off two weeks, and I I don't think we I don't think we would lose much. Let's put it that way. Would we would we, would we gain any knowledge? Uh, if we opened up in two weeks, we would open up in the exact same manner. It's just a question of whether we think that that community spread is low enough where it's safe to open up, so that the chances of somebody walking through the doors 
it doesn't have COVID-19. Have, have, pre, have people been pretty, pretty um, responsible about their mask wearing who, when they were coming into the office for, for, work, for work to be performed? Not our employees, I mean, but, you know, services rendered. Um, everyone was very agreeable to mask wearing and they did it in the right way and half their face wasn't uncovered because they didn't realize their nose needed to be covered too. <laughs> uh, some people do forget that they're like an NFL football coach. Some people do forget that their nose can transmit COVID, but I, I, that was way in the early stages. Most people have, in my experience, has been most people have 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 complied with the request. Well, you guys, I mean, I, I, I'll I'll stick with what I said before, and I'll go with anything. But you know, it's in my DNA to trust the people that work for us, and if this, if 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 they think this can be done safely. And not increase the the, the risk of, of COVID spread, then then I'm I'm willing to do that. I, I would like to make sure that we have um, uh, uh, tracing being performed, so that we know who's coming in and out. We know everything because contact tracing. We we can't forget mm -hmm. about that as a as a as a spread caution. Yeah, we, we did have a log book that we were, while we were open, we were using. Um, I mean, I, I if we want to, I'm, I mean, we could we could talk about to set the next meeting on on, on March 10th, if if that's better. Um, yeah. And see where the numbers are then. Rick, what, do you happen to know off the top of your head, what's the, the number of cases, uh, active cases in Waitley? <laughs> Of course, that's that we know about. Right? I believe it's only zero or one. Oh, it's either zero or one at this point. Yeah. And is is anybody else around us in uh, what they what's the highest one uh, red zone or? Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I think Sunderland and Amherst may still be in the red because of um, mm -hmm. because what's happened at UMass, but I I don't recall. Yeah. Yeah, they've had substantial improvements, so they probably won't be read for a lot longer. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm definitely not opposed to waiting. We can talk about it on March 10th. Yeah. Okay. I, I guess I'm, I'm a little hesitant right now to open up, I, I guess. I... Okay. Then why don't we table this till the next meeting? Then we may or may not have any more information, but um, we'll have had some time to think about it. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay, that's fine with me. Okay, do we need to take a... <clears throat> no, because everything stays the same. Okay, so we're not making any changes to town offices right now. You can put it on the agenda for our next meeting on March 10th, okay? This will be a topic for a while. <laughs> yeah. I throw it away. It's always on there, isn't it? Okay, moving on. Old business, uh, discuss schedule for development and release of... Uh, Request for information for the use of the center school. Yep. So in the in the meeting packet, there was uh, a really brief memo of my thoughts about the the process um, and what it's going to entail, and and my thoughts about about workload. Um, the next you know month month and a half is going to be pretty busy with budget development and finance committee and personnel and and capital. Uh, capital improvement projects. Um, so I make a recommendation that that we try to get it out um, by early May. Um, one of the things that I, I just wanted to talk about was that 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 putting together the document and getting it out is really the start of a much a much longer process, um, mm -hmm. and it's going to involve you know people beyond me. It's going to involve. Um, it's going to involve some of the staff people here, and it's going to involve Keith as the highway and building superintendent. Um, and then presumably the RFI would 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 provide the board with information as to, and the board would decide whether it wants to do an RFP. Um, so the RFI is really just gathering information. Uh, you want to find out who is interested in the opportunity, who's interested in it, maybe in some type of partnership, or what forms of ownership they may be interested in. Um, reusing the school. Um, 
uh, if you recall, the some of the recommendations from the center school committee were, you know, in terms of the form of ownership was if the town would maintain it and then there would be some types of tenancy um, or whether the town would 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 want to dispose of it. There's a lot of different options. So I guess that's the point for the RFI. Um, so I, I guess that was my suggestion as to what the timing would be, because that's the request that <laughs> came from the last meeting, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I guess to me, it's, it sounds sounds reasonable to for you to get more involved uh, after the budget season here. Uh, and mm -hmm. I guess there would be nothing as far as uh, for the annual town meeting, whenever we have it, it's still going to be too premature to do anything at that point. When they do it in May, you're only talking a month or two. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I would, I would say do it uh, in, in May or, or no sooner than May, I guess, than what fits in your schedule and, and develop a reasonable time period. I guess we're, we're not in a time crunch, so you know, put enough time in there to ask for responses. We don't need a one week turnaround or anything like that, so. Yeah, I'm inclined to go along with what your your memo sounds completely reasonable and it may be starting in May, we actually get things going. So maybe next year's town meeting, we actually have something to vote on. Right. Um, so that, uh, um, but it, it's getting the ball rolling and that's, I think a really important thing. All right. Okay, Jonathan. Jonathan, you have anything to say? No, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Do we need a vote? <clears throat> I don't think it's a vote. Just no. Yeah. Okay. No. Just guidance for Brian. Okay. Okay. The other item is uh, discuss grant priorities and project ideas. Brian, I think you shared with us. Uh, a page with some uh, some of that information. I think that's the same thing you shared at our last meeting. Only I think yeah. you added some uh, comments to it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll sh I'll share that document. <clears throat> I'll, I'll zoom in on it. Thank you. Right. So we had talked about. Yeah. We had talked about these. The grants that we had listed um and really my thinking in terms of priorities was that there was an existing need to address these um we can we could obviously we can adjust these as as the board sees fit um so so i have shared winter streets and spaces that's the next one that's due um we've applied for this twice um we were trying to address the uh the second project on our um, complete streets prioritization list, that was the the, um, the sidewalks at the elementary school and in some other safety improvements out by the road there in terms of uh, school zone signs and speed, uh, speed feedback signs, but they apparently wanted to focus more on downtowns and restaurants and outdoor eating and things like that. Um, so, um, I don't, in our discussion at the last meeting, I don't think we thought of this as, as too high of a priority. Um, yeah, I mean, we could resubmit for a third time and see what happens, but. Um, forgive me, but I, I thought we had decided at the last meeting not to go, not to pursue that and to put our right. limited resources and energies, capital resources, human resources, I mean, towards the other ones. And, and we had decided that wasn't going to be an option at all. So I don't. Yep. That's. That's fine. I don't know that. I just want to have the discussion to make sure that's what we want to do. Yeah, well, it's low on the list, so if lower or don't do it, I guess. And we're not going to get it, so. Yep. Yeah. I mean, unless it's already in the envelope and all it's going to cost us is a stamp, you know, then, you know, if, if all it's cost us is a stamp, then even though it's a low priority, yeah, send it. But if it okay. takes a, a more than an hour of your time, <laughs> or or something like that, I, I think we yeah that might yeah. be. Next one's the cohort replacement municipal assistance grant. We applied. We've applied. This will be the fourth time for this grant. 
the, the two times we applied previously were for the uh, culvert on Williamsburg Road, um, just beyond where the new bridges were constructed. Um, and last year we applied for the, the culvert um, on Christian Lane near State Road. Um, I think our I think our plan is to um, reapply for that one. Um, it fits the grant criteria, and there are some issues with that culvert. Uh, Keith's talked in the past how so that's an old uh, an old stone culvert, and it's essentially the road the roadway is sagging because the culvert um, keeps sagging. Brian, my question on this is 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 if Culvert replacement and repair is the focus of MVP. Yep. Why wouldn't we just punt on this specific one and just wrap it into the MVP piece that's due later on this spring? Um, two different pots of money. So if we could get this one is for design. Uh, if we could get the design paid for through this grant, we would have additional monies to spend elsewhere through the MVP grant. Okay, so it's for design. Okay, I wasn't. I I, I guess I missed that. Okay. Yeah, and it's only eligible because the stream that runs through it is is of of high ecological value. Okay. Okay. Um, the next ones are the are the the one stop for community growth. Um, this is, has an expression of interest in, on April second. Um, these are really more towards, these are really geared more towards planning. Um, but it's planning. Um, so these are for next fiscal year's grant programs for a lot of these, pro for a lot of the programs that are included in the one stop for growth, they've combined them all and they're required, they're, they're requiring people to apply well in advance and to go through this system now. Um, so it, it's conversations we should have um, between now and April 2nd. It, it, it's just an expression of interest. So I think yeah. we should work on developing some project ideas. Um, the Rural and Small Town Development Fund is a, is a new grant program. So it's something we'll wanna take a closer look at. Yeah. Um, they both been like good early, you know, put, put some effort in early to put us in a good position to get grants later kind of opportunities is that yeah yep uh, and this is the first this this is a brand new system that they've that they're implementing um and we'll, we'll see how it goes it they repackaged a lot of the existing grant programs to try are to help municipalities them, are either of them a big lift um uh, the expression of interest I don't think so. Can't um, but if on the other end they say, "Yeah, that's we'd like you to submit for this program," then we'll have to we'll have to be ready to mm -hmm. to take that on. I, I thought I've been reading in a in a paper that at least the first one here is, you know, money was made available and and like eighty percent of it's already kind of committed to larger projects in, in cities and, and larger communities. Sure. And that we're competing for like a $5 million available statewide. I, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it, it just doesn't seem that we're the, in the, the right size community for it. The community planning one, is that what you're referring right. to? Right, the community planning one, what I'm referring to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, essentially uh, what we would be doing is the expression of interest is is submitted to the one stop for growth program, um, and then they'll tell us what grants fit our project is what the promise is. Well, I don't know that I've <laughs> I, I don't know how it's going to work out, but it's that's the process that they've laid out. If it's the same expression of interest, then then do it, even though we are all aware that probably the most recently announced fund fund. Uh, is going to be our more likely target. Right. But we know if we don't send an expression of interest, then we probably won't be eligible for anything. Probably not. Yeah. So I feel like our decision tonight is, is an easy one. And yeah. I'm not going to 
it, it, because it's not a heavy lift, I'm not worried that we're going to, you know, throw a lot of time and energy down the drain over a program that we're never going to get money out of. We don't really know. It's new. So might as well try. Yep. So I'll, I'll dive deeper into that and we'll have some additional conversations about what, what the priorities for that might be. The next one is uh, Green Communities Grant. This is one that I think we're all familiar with. Um, I'll follow up with Wayne to see if he's heard anything back from the Berkshire Design Group on uh, proposed upgrades for the water department. Um, but I'm not sure if, if we have a backup or if anybody has a backup or, I mean, we're talking April 9th. So maybe I guess, I guess the thing is to, if anybody has any backup ideas, then we should probably discuss those, not necessarily now, but um, we should talk about those. Um, so I assume that, that if we can, if we can develop a, a project that, that qualifies for green communities, we would want to do that. Um, it's up to, uh, I think it's up to $250,000 for energy conservation improvements that, that would qualify. So, has our energy committee been asked to come up with anything? Um, well, we have an energy committee member. I, I think they know of the grant. I think you guys are focused on solar and uh, charging stations right now, right? Yeah, that's correct. So I don't know that you're working actively on a green community at this point. No. Because green communities does not fund solar uh, or charging stations, I believe. Yeah, I don't think that they favor those right now. I know, I know, not solar. Right. Okay. Um, so the next one is the is a veterans heritage grant. This is kind of just taken off um, just this afternoon, I guess. Um, there's some movement by the historical commission to help the help the veterans committee uh, move that project along. Um, so Donna had some conversations with with Donna as the historical commission chair. Had some conversations with um, the state, one of the state archivists, um, and it would appear that there's a possibility to get twenty thousand dollars towards that project. Um, but there's also a 50% match. So the CPA funds could be um, used to match the grant. I don't know if there's $40,000 worth of improvements that need to be made there, um, but um, they're willing to take on some of that work to apply for this grant. So. Um, yeah. I think we're just gonna kind of let that play out if that's all right. Let I'm happy to hear they're they're willing to work together to, to maybe get some movement on that. That's really great. Yeah. So thank you, Historical Commission, for stepping up. Um, so there's the Community Compact Efficiency and Regionalization Grant. That's due on, on April 15th. Um, one of the items I was thinking about uh, exploring was whether it would fund, we talked a little bit last meeting about the need for some type of planning position. Um, I'm wondering if they if that's something that they would fund if we were to share it with another town, share their position with another town. Um, so I wanted to explore that a little bit. Have or if had we had have you had conversations with, with 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 towns that we've talked about in the past? I haven't talked to Jeff about this yet, um, but I plan to probably hopefully the end of this week or early next week. Okay. Um, so complete streets, that's due May 1st. I, I think this is something that May, yeah, May 1st. Um, this is something that we should apply for. We still have the that little section of uh, Chestnut Plain Road that needs to be, the sidewalk needs to be redone. And we also want to start looking at the other, the other uh, projects we have on our prioritization plan. And that sh should be funded through the complete streets program. 
So I think that would be something. We'll, maybe we'll have a meeting or two with the. We'll reconvene the complete streets committee and, and see what see what we can do with that. Hmm. Uh, um, so we should qualify. We should be eligible for the MVP action grants. It should be around um, this spring. I don't think I haven't seen that it has been announced yet. Um, one of the things we've talked about in the past is to try to address some of our COVID issues uh, with the MVP funds. So I, I think that's also mm -hmm. something that we would want to look at. Um, community compact best practices. That's uh, something that I believe we are eligible for this year. Uh, we can look at that at, at some point. There's the whole list of best practices that the state has. And will give us a little bit of money to try to work towards those. Um, so we can look at those. The other two are are just ongoing offerings from uh, Office of Municipal and School Technology, and this one I had forgot to put on the uh, uh, the the previous checklist. The previous version of this is the the Mass uh, EVIP. Um, so that would be for the charging stations, and that's I think Jonathan just said that's something that the Energy Committee still still working towards. Yeah. And those are rolling deadlines. Yeah. Um, I know that I know that they pulled permits for the to do the electrical work at the park and ride. I haven't seen that Good. if any work has been done there, but um, um but if but if they pulled permits, that's progress that I hadn't heard about. So thank you for that update. Mm. Yep, I believe I believe they're gonna put in I believe they're gonna put in two stations, so four charging ports yeah at level two You're right mm -hmm. so it'll be people who are parking who are parking there to leave their car there for a period of time and then coming back to it or right. getting a uh a, a whatever a quick not a quick but some level of charge that mm -hmm. gets them right. somewhere else but. but but again the parking the whole concept around around a parking ride is to leave your car and go with somebody else um, so your carpooling uh, and, and leaving your car. So um, that fits with the overall purpose mm -hmm. of the parking ride. Yeah. Right. Has, I'm has, there, about that. has there been any talk about about the, the the fast charging stations and locations around highways like 91? Yeah. Well, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation around public land versus private land um, partnership, you know, public private partnerships. Um, there's a little bit involved, but yes, we, we've talked about all the different options and, and where the high traffic, no pun intended, um, sites are. Um, so, so yeah, and obviously off, off of 24, uh, we've talked about the diner, we've talked, you know, the pros and cons of the diner, we've talked about, um, you know, even, even in, 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 in the post office area. Uh, making it available for people who were at the Waitley Inn having a meal, um, you know, and any number of, of, of different options. And we just have to, you know, we're doing a little bit more due diligence. Yeah. So we should have talked about it with the Herberts. Are you, are you guys aware of the study that Burkhog did uh, two or three years ago on identifying all locations that are existing and, and what, is proposed or what they feel is needed in the future. Are you aware of that study? I wasn't, but maybe one of my colleagues on the energy committee is. It's on the FERCOG website. Okay, I, I mean, I, I can take a look. I, I I don't frequent the COG website, I will admit. And, and what I, I looked at it the other day for some reason, there, there's like 20 charging stations in I think it was just Franklin and some of Hampshire County. There's like over 20 stations already. Yeah, John, yeah, but Fred, you say that as if it's a big number. But well, Franklin County and Hampshire County are huge. There, I, I can tell you there's plenty of times when I cannot find a place to charge my car. Okay, well, I'm just saying yeah. that's, that study was done in 2017, I think, mm -hmm. the date on it. So I don't know what has been done since then, but. I mean, it's it's a study. Somebody looked at it, and it may be worth looking at it again to see what's useful in there. Fred, I will commit to looking at it. Though I will say that three years later, pushing four years later, the the EV 
industry has changed dramatically. There are a lot more EV options for consumers to purchase. Um, the, evo- the, the, the technology evolution of EVs are, are, have, have, have expanded dramatically in, in terms of the miles that can be driven between charges. So as much as that, that, um, that paper will serve as a good foundational piece of information, a lot has changed in four years in, 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 uh, in the EV world. Yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing, again, I think the FERCOG meeting the other day, they mentioned they're doing a study. On it. Brian, do you remember what they said on the charging stations? Was it this year's work program or next year's? I'd have, I'd have to look at the work program. I, I don't remember which year it was. But and again, mention- Fred, the, the, the point the energy, the thing that the energy committee talks a lot about is, is we want this to be a, a mechanism that can serve current demand, but we also want it to be a, a catalyst for more people to buy EVs. Um, you know, it, people are going to be more likely to buy an EV if they see a, a forecast for an expanded number of charging stations beyond just the current demand. Um, we can look at future demand, but in my opinion, future demand isn't enough. We want to be a catalyst for exponentially increasing that prognosticated, bad word, um, uh, future demand. You know, I, and I'll use me as an example. I'll buy an EV char- I'll buy an EV, an electric vehicle car when I don't face the challenges that Joyce does about finding a, a thing. Does that make me a, a selfish guy? Maybe it does, I don't know. And I wanna really buy one, but I wanna make sure that that charging stations make it about as convenient as possible for an average consumer to want to buy an electric vehicle. So we wanna, we wanna be ahead of the curve, not, be, but not behind the curve. Okay. So on your list here, Brian, you're you're looking for us to what uh, uh, accept what you proposed here? What what are you? Um, what are you uh, looking for? I mean, I, I think I just wanted to have the conversation about about yeah. I guess just just here's what's out there, and here's what what we're gonna try to do. I mean, I. I Ideally, we would try to do, you know, most of these if we can. Yeah. Um, maybe I have a not. Quick question to interject there. I see that the cyber security health check and the leaks. And I guess I'm wondering, do we feel like we've you know we've done that in a, in a recent enough time frame that that we are really up to date on that, or is there a different reason why that's a low priority? Um, and forgive me if we discussed it here and I forgot, but I don't remember discussing the prioritization here. Or it might no, be, we, yeah, whatever the reason is, but I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we haven't discussed our prioritization. Um, and I guess there's, uh, I mean, quite honestly, it, it should probably be higher um, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and, and I think we may have actually reached out to the, um, mm. I think we may have actually reached out to see um, what it would take to get that done. Um, I, I could be wrong, and and maybe the focus is different than what I'm what I'm thinking. But I know that that, and I don't know why they're the ones who did it. But I know that um, the the um, Planning Commission that's responsible for Boston has an RFP out for cybersecurity work to be done in Franklin County. Um, they're doing it based, odd, yeah. upon, based upon money that's available from Homeland Security. So, huh. it, and it's not it's not something that we would apply for. They are going to provide money or services or something um, 
to Franklin County. I think it's just because there's so much larger of a planning commission than anyone else in the state that they're that they're driving the RFP. So we might want to look into that as as something that is in the works so that we can focus on other things potentially. And Brian, I may be butchering mm-hmm. what exactly it is, but it's it's certainly um, what's the group called? David Soul used to run it. Um, Metro planning, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, the um, not Metro West. No, it's boss. It's it's it's. MA, it's MAPC, whatever that stands for. MAPC. Yeah, Metropol- Metropolitan Area Planning Commission. Yeah. So um, there's something there. It may be worth research just so we know what's happening before we do our own magic. Yeah, and I mean, we had the regional IT assessment that was recently completed. Um, it was probably 12, eight to 12, eight to 10 months ago, maybe. Um, and they did, they did some, um, some level of analysis of, of, of what we have and what communities across Franklin County have. Um, and prior to that, we also had another, um, sort of assessment done. So, I, I mean, it's something that if it's free and they're going to offer it, I think we should do it. Um, mm-hmm. and I th- think it is free. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it probably should be a higher priority. I mean, it's never a high priority until, you, you know, you get ransomware or something and you can't, you can't get your files, but um, yeah, it, it could be higher. Okay. So I think, I think we should change that to either medium or high. I, I would make it high personally, but. Yeah. Well, now, I don't know enough about the community compact best practices, but it says TBD. It sounds like we don't necessarily have a, a, a well-formed project idea there. So right. when we get to the rollings, it's kind of like these other ones are a little more obvious because they have fixed states, but maybe the other ones are worth looking into the thing John mentioned and because that might be easier than applying for one of these grants. But, but okay, no, thank you for, uh, for addressing that. Yep. I, I guess, Brian, what I see here is that you've identified uh, grants for for the town that we should consider getting and, and rating them as uh, I guess opportunities for the town. What I don't see, and, and I think we kind of alluded to it last time, and the reason for doing this is what do you have time to do? Now you on another part of the agenda here. There's what three items three activities that we're saying are high priority that you're gonna focus your time on, if you, which is great if you do that. But, but in addition to that, I, I guess, I don't see how you can focus on all what 12 of these or whatever there is here, even maybe just the high ones even, I, I don't know. Uh, and I don't know if that gives you any any direction of of what you should focus on, and and to help you do that, I think we talked about an assistant or another planning position or increasing hours of some of your staff that would give you more time to focus on this. Uh, I, I, I I don't know. How do you view what you're going to do with with this information? Um, I mean, in, in terms of staffing, I, I mean, it's something that we would need to budget for for, for next fiscal year. Um, I mean, it, it's not something that 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 we have in the budget, really. Um, I mean, in, in terms of in terms of most of these, I think we can get done. Um, you know, if 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 people are willing to take the Veterans Heritage one, which it seems like they are. Um, you know, green communities grant. If we can get, if we can get ideas um, from others, I, I, so so what what takes up a lot of time is, is the is working with the committees and project development. That that just takes up a lot of time. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So if if there's help on that end, so for instance, you know, Donna's willing to help out the veterans committee and try to move that along. I mean, that takes a load off me. Um, to focus on other things. And, and yeah, I'll be looking at the, I, I want to see the final submission and, and see how that goes. 
Um, but it's it, it's helped because instead of um, you know coordinating meetings and attending two meetings and 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 then writing the grant application yourself and that takes up time. But when you can when you can step back and and take a little bit more of an overview approach, it, it's you can handle more things. Um, in a lot of these, I mean, these deadlines are, are spread out over the next, really over the next two months, so. And if, if you look, okay, most of these are by May. Is, is there stuff coming later on in the year or, or we're not looking into that yet? Um, I haven't looked that far yet. Um, if I put my mind to it, I could, I could think about stuff that's going to come in the fall. Um, probably stuff that we applied for this past fall. Um, but I mean, one thing that's going to come around is the, the, uh, one stop for growth. That's not just a April 2nd, give us mm -hmm. your expression of interest. I, that's going to be a, a longer process. I mean, this is just to really get in the, get in the front door and then have, have, have these opportunities to apply for these other grants. Which is a, it really is what system that they're setting up is you need to mm -hmm. we need to jump through these hoops in order to be eligible for these grants, which I think it probably makes it less. For, uh, I think it makes it more restrictive and harder for smaller communities to to access these funds now, but because it takes more time, which I don't necessarily think that was their intent, but. Mm. But I, I think we should, we could get submissions for for these. So, is there a way of you getting assistance to help you on some of these, uh, other than the shared planning position, which probably won't happen till most of these are are completed? But in the meet in the interim, is there a way <coughs> you can get additional help? Um. I mean, the ones that it's helpful for the Veterans Heritage Grant, if there's, if people have ideas for green communities um, and can work on those, that's helpful. Um, efficiency and regionalization, that's something that, that, that I really just need to talk to. Uh, I want to talk to Sunderland about. Um, complete streets, I mean, well, I think it's worth getting the Complete Streets Committee back together. Um, and to review that grant, that's yeah, you know, that's due May first. So, yeah, but a lot of that work was done, and we have we had a five year plan, and it's a matter of reviewing the five year plan, and you know, so I, I don't think that's going to be an extensive series of meetings. So that's why that one it seems to me that we've got a plan, you know, a project in mind. We've got a group who <coughs> who can be involved in, in uh, tweaking that if needed. But I would I would say for that one I don't think it's going to be as much of the the time consuming stuff you talked about um, coordinating meetings and so on. So I I, I feel like that one I, I'm comfortable with that one. Yeah. Okay. So Brian, what what are you looking for from the board? Um. I guess I just I just wanted feedback on on hmm. on on how the board wanted to to proceed with these. And I, and I think I've gotten that. I think I've gotten valuable feedback okay. um, and it could sort of help me prioritize how I, how we go about these. Okay. Okay, should we move on then? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Any further? Okay, moving on the agenda. Okay, uh, next item is uh, new business to discuss and vote to sign a mutual aid agreement between Waitley and Hatfield Fire Department regarding emergency response on Interstate 91. And I think our chief is with us tonight. Uh, you, does he want to say anything about this? It's just better access for both departments too. And it's a section of 91 that's, Whaley would cover the southbound lane in Hatfield 
instead of having to go to, and Hatfield would cover the northbound side in Whaley so that we wouldn't have to respond to Northampton to get to, to get to Whaley on 91. And the, and the same thing, we would cover Hatfield so they wouldn't have to go to South Deerfield to turn around. It just makes it, be, they, would be, they would be dispatched and responsible for the call. How is this any different than what's happening now? How is it what? How is it any different than what's happening right now? We're responsible for our community now. For okay. presently now, for to, to do the 91 northbound south of Tom's entrance, Tom's hot dog stand entrance, okay. I have to go to Northampton to get to that, to turn around to get on that side of the highway. Okay. And they have to go to, Hatfield has to go to South Deerfield. We just swap those sections of, of highway and it makes life safer. Honestly, I, I don't even see why we would spend more than 30 seconds debating this. It is absolute common sense. Okay. Yeah. It, sh it should have been done 50 years ago. Exactly. Well, Parochialism gets in the way. Maybe yeah. not that long ago, but when they opened high the highway, that should have, when should have been when it was done. 67, yeah. 60 years ago, almost, yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, then I move that we um, agree to sign this mutual aid agreement. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you. Don't we leave, had hope you had fun. Don't leave, John. This is exciting. It's where the cool kids hang out on Wednesday night. You woke me up, I think. Okay, next item is uh, solar replacement establishment of resource solar replacement fee. We recently adopted in the solar zoning bylaws. <clears throat> Judy, okay. Judy's here if she wants to talk about it. Yeah. She waited I, all this time, you know. To... I've just been panting to get to this. Yeah. Um, I can't say much more than is here on the memo, but I think you remember we, we did some major changes to the solar bylaw last year, large mounted ground scale solar bylaw. And we tried to provide a balance between encouraging alternative energy and saving farmland and timberland. And one piece of that was this, what we call the resource replacement fee. And the idea was, or the, the concept is that for every acre that's taken out of agricultural timberland production, the solar facility should pay a fee that will then go to the open space, CPA open space research fund. Um, and in our infinite wisdom, the planning board decided to let the select board determine the amount of the fee with, so the, nice. input, with the input from the Ag Commission and the Conservation Commission. I would suggest that maybe you might want to add a member from the Open Space Committee as well. But I think it's important to get it in place. We don't know when these come, but when they do come, you only have so long to deal with them. Yeah. And there's a qualification that the AG, when they reviewed this, cautioned us that this might not stand up in court. Um, I think we knew that when we drafted the bylaw, Brian shared the, the standing court decision with me. It's, it's, I think the right word is ephemeral, but the gist of it is that the more the remediation fee is related to the, to the problem or to the cause, that the more likely it is to stand. And 
I think we've crafted something that's about as directly related to the to the damage or the or the harm as it could possibly be. And that's another reason to have the Ag Commission and the Conservation Commission involved in setting the fee, I think. That's Is all I have to say. Are the Ag Commission or, or CONCOM respectively, have they been approached about this? That's Seeking we, up advice? No. Well, then I think- Well, they've been copied on this memo, right? There's a memo that's to yes, the yes, board. they were copied on the memo. Oh, so in, to that extent, they, they know it's they know it's 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 an issue. Yeah. Do you happen to know, Judy, um, uh, with other towns who have maybe similar uh, no, bits think, in their bylaws? No, I don't know of any. A uh, very few towns approach the solar bylaw the way, way we do. Most of them have discrete overlay districts that limit it to certain areas of town. And I think Joyce, you sat in on our meetings last year. Some of them, we haven't yeah. been able to identify any mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. So, so our situation is very different. Um, yeah. We did cap- The reason I ask is that, um, right, the, yeah, the, re the reason I ask is that, um, you're saying we should decide on this resource replacement fee fairly soon. Well, the normal thing to do is to look at what is the fee in nearby communities and uh, <coughs> that have similar kinds of laws. And um, I think that will be, that's something that we kind of need. Um, we need well, that kind of I information. Invented, and, and it sounds like you don't know where to look for that. I think we invented this. I would, if I, actually, I would put this back to the other people, but for the egg, for the APRs, it's. I think it would be fairly straightforward because we've done many of them over the past seven or eight years. And if somebody just figured out what the average local contribution per acre is, that would be fairly straightforward. Mm. For conservation restrictions, there have been many fewer of those, and you don't have the the state picking up the APR provision, but but I think there could be, somebody could contact the local land trusts and find out what towns typically put up for a piece of this. I think, I think there's evidence around, but it's not the place. It'll take a little bit. The to towns it. wouldn't have it. The, the people who do the conservation and the APRs would have it. Okay. So, so the idea is that the, the resource replacement fee would be spent on like a conservation restriction. Is that? Yeah, it would go to the, it would go to the CPA open space fund. And that's for, that's for preserving open space. That's where you, that's the mechanism mm -hmm. the town has to invest in APRs and conservation restrictions. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, think don't have to set up a new bank account. Lynn was worried about, oh my God, not another bank account. No, I mean, it's a dedicated fund for preserving open space. Mm -hmm. The thing that comes to mind is, you know, we assess properties differently, excess land and, and farmland and, and maybe open space. We, we assess it at a much lower value than, than a building lot. And there is that flexibility, you know, it goes anywhere from several hundred to three or four thousand dollars in assessed value. Now, this, which, which relates to to the, the taxes. So I guess one way of looking at it would be the assessed the value of that excess property or or the the taxes that are that could be assessed on that property if it was uh, this only applies to land that has been in chapter for at least one of the previous three years. And the conservation and APRs have the same tax rates as chapter. So there's no tax impact. Okay. Sounds like a working group. Yeah, it does sound like a working group. Doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah. Doesn't the first, isn't the first step that we should we should seek input from AG and CONCOM 
and and see what they say and then we can re, re, yeah. we can react and, and just yeah. follow the advice of of um yeah planning i i would actually suggest a working group so they can sit down and right. kind of talk about it because they're they're slightly different constraints from ag and conservation and blending them is going to be something of an issue okay um you well, don't I want to push everything to farmland by having the feed cheaper there yeah, I'd uh, volunteer for that working group then. Um, it sounds like there's a, you know, it, that's that's absolutely the fastest way to get at least a consensus on what we need. And um, it might be, we don't have all the information we need, but I think that uh, um, I'll, I'll volunteer to be on that if the other selectmen will will have me. Joyce, I was going to say that I'm I'm fine with a, with a commission as long as I'm not the representative, so you have at it. I have, no, I have no problem when you're doing it, Joyce. Go for it. Okay. All right, all right. I mean, it's just, it's just sort of, it feels like a like a like a solar host community agreement, and there's that, that's kind of my specialty, right? These little agreements, right. with, and, 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 and something and, where you have to rationalize a fee based on da 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 da. da. So right. I, I feel like I'm I'm equipped. Brian, please tell me this is a commission that does not have to be uh, voted on by the board, and it can be sort of a a, an ad hoc commission, or does this need to be a formalized thing? I think it could be an ad hoc commission. I think it could be. Uh, I think it could be an informal working group. It's an advisory. Informal work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with an advisory capacity. Okay. Made up of at okay. least one member of ag and one member of, of of planning and one member of concom. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Uh, next item is discuss on joint letter opposing the prioritization of mass COVID-19 vaccination sites over local vaccination sites. Hmm. I think this is another 30 second issue. Where did this come from? Um, well, it came from Sunderland. Jonathan, I, I think I saw you in the email chain. Yeah. Right. There is... There's overwhelming evidence that there, there are some people who believe that mass sites are more effective. The challenge with mass sites is that it is a, a huge barrier to people without uh, online capabilities uh, from signing up. It means that they're in large places it, that potentially is not convenient to more rural areas. It is once again an initiative that thinks that larger populated areas are smarter, wiser, and more important than smaller rural areas. And I'm being somewhat dramatic there, but not overly. Not much. Um, so I, I'm going to strongly encourage us to sign this. We have done an incredibly good job at both Treehouse and in Greenfield um, to administer. But if this were to pass, we would essentially be last on the list at Treehouse, um, not being able to administer the vaccine to people in, in our immediate vicinity. Um, it doesn't mean that we're gonna preclude others, but convenience for vaccine is one reason to get the vaccine. We don't wanna put up obstacles to get the vaccine. We wanna remove obstacles to get the vaccine. Yeah. And removing this, um, or we're maintaining the local flavor, uh, and we really do know what we're doing. We're probably better at it than most because we practice, we've been practicing vaccination distribution for 15, 20 years through our flu work. Yeah. Um, so we're very strong on this, and this letter needs to be signed. Yeah. Well, you say that we would be precluded from going to Treehouse. Why do you say that? Treehouse wouldn't, ex they, wouldn't they wouldn't get any any vaccines, Fred. They would all go to Schaefer Stadium, or it's not Schaefer Stadium, it hasn't been there for 40 years. But, but they, you know, Gillette Stadium, um, you know, the larger, you know, you'd have to go down to Springfield to, to the Eastfield Mall. Okay, um, but how do we know with this, uh, if we're even gonna get vaccines? Well, we got it Does once. Does this help us get vaccines? It should, yes. But if these other community, other venues that have it, that are open and recognize don't get it, don't get enough. How are we going to compete with them? We, 
the, the are we going to get anything then? The point is, and we, by the way, we have 500 vaccines going in people's arms on Friday and Saturday of this week. So it's not that we wouldn't get them. It just, we know we would not get them if they just set up mass distribution facilities. Where, where are you saying these 500 are? We have, we have, we have, what's that? Yeah, we received 500. There's 500 appointments. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. I think it's tomorrow, Friday for Treehouse. Yeah. There was, a, Fred, you, you, um, there were several robocalls on this from Jim Savini. Right, that was last week. But it got, but then he put it another one out because it got pushed because of weather. Yeah. Well, maybe last week, nothing this week that I'm aware of. As, yeah. as, soon, as, the weather, as soon as the weather hit, he put out a robocall. Go ahead, Joyce. Yeah. Can I just, Fred, you can't possibly be arguing that we should not sign this letter. Well, right. I'm just questioning some of the, the wording in here because I, I'm not aware of everything that's that's referenced in here. Well, but that's okay. That that's fine, Fred. But that doesn't mean you you don't sign the letter. It just it, it you know none of us are aware of every single thing that goes on in the in the region. Okay, but. Okay, but getting back to, that's the first I hear there's 500 vaccines available. And you haven't been paying attention, Fred. If you, if you don't know that, then you haven't been paying attention. Because even I knew that, and I'm not eligible until, I don't know, probably July. But, you know. <laughs> We've been on for the last three days trying to find a location and nothing comes up. No, but but Fred, the, the, the 500 have been spoken for since last week. The only difference is the 500 vaccines that were supposed to go in people's arms last week that couldn't because of weather, those 500 slots just transitioned to this week. Okay, I was, okay, I was aware of that, I guess, yes. So what, so what the state is saying, 500. right, so what the state is saying is we're not going to give Deerfield another 500 vaccines. Instead, we're going to give 500 to Eastfield Mall in Springfield okay. because it's a regional site because it's Western Mass so everybody can get to Springfield. That's that's the stance that the state is taking. I was on a, uh, a call with the MMA. It was Tuesday and that's a, uh, a regular call that we have with the Lieutenant Governor and they, they being the administration really heard it from communities and most everybody was really up in arms that they had done all this planning for all these local vaccination sites. Right. And all of a sudden the state says, Oh, sorry, we're going to send them to Gillette stadium and we're going to send them to Eastfield mall. And we're going to send them to uh, wherever. And it, it's not only Franklin County that, you know, the regional sites in, in Berkshire County that, you know, people need to travel an hour from Savoy to get to, wherever to get a to get a vaccine it, it's it, it makes people not want to get them right okay let me ask specifically you say we have the capacity to vaccinate residents where would this be at the senior center where are we talking treehouse the treehouse brewery that's where the the local site that that our community has planned for the, is at the, the treehouse owner, brewery site that where channing beat used to be Right. I, I'm sorry, Joyce. I thought you were done. I, the owners of Treehouse Brewery have graciously offered up their space because they have the the, the physical space inside. They have the parking. They, they, they have done everything to make their facility available to the, 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 the South County region so that our seniors have an opportunity to get the vaccine, our seniors and, and those with co comorbidities. So, I mean, hats off to Treehouse. And, and you know, I, I, I say in jest, but you know, if if, if this is a, this is a tremendous move by a company that's new to the area, and they want to be good partners. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it's great, and and we should be signing this thing and 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 move to the next agenda item because I, yeah. you know. Yeah, we, we don't need more than 30 seconds to think about this. Okay. I'm signing it. 
I don't know if we need to vote to sign it. I'd make a motion. Yeah, I think we probably do. I'd make a motion to, to that um, that we sign this letter um, from the three towns to the governor. I second it. Okay. okay, and it's okay. It's written. Okay, for all three of us sign. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Joyce. Hi. Uh, Jonathan. Yep. Brad. Okay. Yes. So Brian, you put this on our table as sign. Yep. Okay. And and by the way, there's a sense of urgency about this. I think Fred, if you can get to the table tomorrow, um, that would be great because there is a sense of urgency around this. Right. We're trying to send a, an original uh, original signatures and all. So Sunderland has signed it. Then it's us, and then then it's going to go to Deerfield. Because Deerfield okay. votes tomorrow. I so think so. We need, we need to deliver the original document yeah. signed by us for Deerfield tomorrow night. Mm. Can you put it out in the lobby tonight before you leave, Brian? Yep. Okay. okay. Then I can try and get there before I go off to work tomorrow. Oh, is this you, Joyce? Or no, it's just it's just the chair, I think, isn't it? No, it's all three. It's everybody. Copy in our, oh, I missed in that. Our I'm sorry. I, oh, thank you. Because I thought it was just the, the, the chair across the three towns, but okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan, for the additional information. I was a little confused to what was going on because it wasn't specific, but okay. Appreciate your input. Okay. Uh, moving on to accept the local council, local cultural council grant award. And the 4,800 from the Mass Cultural Council. Ryan? Yep. It's oh, the nice. annual yeah. award. Annual award, so uh, we need to vote and sign something on that? Yep, it would, yeah, you vote and then Fred, you would sign it. I move that we uh, enter into the we'll agreement as we normally do. Okay, roll call vote, Joyce. Aye. Jonathan? Okay, Fred, yes. Okay, uh, next, accept resignation of Darcy Tozier from the Historical Commission. <coughs> Sadly, yes. Yeah. Okay, all those in. Can we send her a nice thank you note? Yep, we should. And do they have a replacement for her? Uh, not yet, no. Okay. okay. We need to vote to accept. No, uh, no. Uh, whatever. Okay. What are we going to say? No, you can't. I mean, I would vote against it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, vote against it. See what happens. Okay. <laughs> we accept the resignation. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Town administrator updates. Um, one thing that's not on there because it, it it came recently is that um, we also received the. The well, it's ten thousand dollars essentially to, to complete the open space plan that yeah. we were expecting. It's a small town conservation assistance grant. Um, I don't know that we necessarily need to vote, but I assume we would vote yes. Yes, we will accept. I'll move if we need to vote it. <laughs> um, so just a couple updates, FCAT. Uh, we're still, we still obviously can't go live from the, from the town offices. Um, they're still trying to figure out the, they're still trying to keep engineers on staff and long enough to help us. Um, but we're told that, that they have a new engineer on staff and they're going to help us to be able to go live from our conference room whenever we get to do this in person. Um, and one of the things, um, we've been thinking about is, is what technology we might need inside that conference room in order for us to expand access to meetings um, that wouldn't necessarily rely on an FCAT staff person showing up with a camera on a tripod. Um, so we want to explore. Um, yeah. I want to explore that. We've, we've reached out to Wasman, Wasman mm -hmm. Audio. Wasman Audio, yeah. Um, they're down on State Road. Um, and we're going to try to set up a, a socially distanced appointment to to talk to them about that. Um, I would like to think that 
if we could get technology that's user friendly, that we have savvy enough people on most of our boards and committees that would use the large conference room that we could greatly expand our um, meeting offerings. I, I don't see mm -hmm. why we couldn't do that. Um, so other than people might object and, because everybody likes to do stuff when they're not on camera, but that's not what the position is. So, right. Um, so we'll, we'll hopefully push that. Um, I mentioned we approved the urban grown community outreach meeting on, on March 1st. Um, that was, <laughs> came as a surprise to all of us when, when they emailed Fred. Um, but I will put something on the website that has a zoom link zoom information. We've done that for others to, to try to make that mm. as accessible as possible. Um, 250th anniversary mobile parade. That's April 25th. Um, We've seen a little bit about, about select board participation. I don't know if we want to talk about that more at a future meeting or it's probably best. Um, I don't really know. I just know that the request has been made. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll all be there, but I don't think we need to really talk about it right now. Is, yeah. is that the, 20, the 24th is a Saturday? Is that the day? I thought it was Saturday and not Sunday. Or am I wrong? Oh, is it the 24th? Well, we can check the date. It was um, I, <coughs> it was certainly that weekend before. Yeah. Now I don't remember if it's Saturday or Sunday. You're right, Fred. I'm sorry. It's the 24th. Okay. Yeah. 24th, 3, April 24th, 3 p.m. Yeah. So we're not going to have a select board float, huh? Well. We can have plexiglass I'm barriers. I'm not going to build a select board float. I, I my hands are way too full this semester um, to do anything before the twenty fifth. All right, so we'll we'll figure something out. Mm -hmm. um, Making these filtration project, we're trying to close that out with Mass DEP. After how many years has it been? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Haydenville Road. Um, Fred and I were attended the virtually attended the FERCOG meeting um for the for the transportation improvement plan and as far as i know their plan is to still include the the that project for construction in fiscal year uh 2025 right fred yes um so that's good we're gonna keep attending those to make sure it doesn't get bumped again um and i haven't heard back from from natalie in terms of our question about cost sharing for the design work and whether we can spread that out over a term of years for chapter 90 but I'll follow up with her. And that's about it. Okay, Brian, I have one question for you. What's what's happening with the water department merger? You were gonna talk to the design consultants at water department about doing some of the work you identified in, in your listing there a minute or two ago that would help you manage that project better. What, has anything happened? Um, yeah, I mean, I talked to Wayne and I, I talked with the, I talked to him about having the, the engineers take on a, a more significant role in that. Um, I haven't gotten back a, a scope of work like I asked from, from them. Um, so, but I haven't been heavily involved. Um, and I, I think Wayne is, is moving the project along with the engineers. Okay. Anything okay. else for this evening, this meeting? No. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I uh, second. Okay. Roll call vote. Joyce. Okay, no, Jonathan. Yes. Yeah. Fred, Fred, yes. Okay. Joyce, okay. Meeting adjourned? Yeah, my internet was unstable there for a minute. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. All right. Night, everybody. Thanks. Good night, Amy. Good night.